Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and I gotta talk about this th th this thing today. See, yesterday we talked about how uh, Zach from Switch Force came out and basically said, through his own source, uh, that he has a 99.9% .9 certainty that a Nintendo Direct would come next week, and he talked about how maybe there were hints throughout his video on what the day might be. Uh, the hints were sort of inconsistent, 14, 15, 16, okay, whatever. We kind of figured we're getting a Direct in June anyways, uh, and, and whatever. Like, we, we get Directs every June except in 2020, and they usually happen, you know, the second or third Tuesday of the month, but that's always been based around E3, so who really knows, right? But uh, getting a Direct in June is a pretty safe bet. Here's the thing. Here's here, here's the big uh, hullabaloo here. A content creator, probably not too unsimilar to myself, uh, went out on Gaming Leaks uh, and uh, what was it Gaming Leaks and Rumors Reddit and posted actual evidence on the exact Nintendo Direct date. Now I think calling it the exact date still may be pushing it too far. However, uh, it doesn't really matter how this person leaked that we are getting a Nintendo Direct next week, which is the big news here. This is a leak. We can basically say we are getting a Nintendo Direct next week. This guy has ruined his career, and hopefully, you know, I, I this is... So one, this is a really baffling situation. This reminds me of when uh, people like, what is it, um, Philip Mewson was giving us content creators a bad name. Uh, this person's not necessarily giving me a bad name because I don't know who it is. Uh, but the fact that it's a content creator just makes content creators less trustworthy. Uh, we're, let's just get into what was said. But before we do, I got to remind you that this video is sponsored by... Hey, folks. I'm here to tell you about today's sponsor, Ridge Wallet. Now, look... Uh, there's a lot of ways that you could show off a Ridge wallet, right? I, I've seen a lot of B-roll on a lot of channels. Uh, I, I see a lot of things like, I don't know, maybe, you know, showing how durable it is and running it over with a car. Uh, but, you know, I actually am choosing to go a more practical route because they wanted to sponsor a video because they are, you know, trying to promote Father's Day promotions, right? You can get 15% off with the code Nintendo Prime uh, through the link down in the description. But here's the thing. I actually am a father a father of three, and I'm used to using extremely bulky wallets. I really had no idea I was actually going to use this product when it was sent to me. I thought I was just going to do this little ad spot and call it a day. But here's the thing. Uh, I've had this Ridge wallet now for, I don't know, about a week, and let's just say I absolutely love it. So right now I've got about, uh, you know, six cards or so in here, and they kind of, you know, they kind of fan out like this, looking, looking, all, looking all nice and all. But the thing is, uh, what I like about it is actually how easy it is because I don't actually use it. It has a notch here to push out your cards and fan them, but that's actually not how I use this wallet. There's a couple ways I use it. One, I use this money clip on the back with the little Ridge logo here, right? So I got a couple bucks in here. I also have some non-essential cards in here. You guys will see, you know, I'm a gamer. I guess GameStop matters or something, and I got like a quick trip gas card in here as well. But these are like non-critical cards. That's why I don't mind them being on the outside. Uh, they're just there for quick convenience sake. But when I actually want to use the wallet, I use a fan technique and not the thumb press. I actually go like this, and then I can kind of thumb through my cards like this and pull one out. Like, oh, yeah, let's let's pull out this one. Well, I'm not going to pull all the way out. I don't want you guys to see my, my card information because uh, these are actual credit cards and bank cards I have in here. Uh, this wallet has actually changed my life. Um, I, I honestly didn't think that I would care, but... One issue I've always had with the big bulky wallets is when I put them in my back pocket, it just hurts. And when I put this in my back pocket, I can't, I, I mean, it's like a minor inconvenience. Also, when I stick it in my front pocket, uh, look at it compared to my phone. It's a little bit thicker than my phone with my cards in. It can like hold up the 12 cards. Uh, but like, look at the size difference. If it's in my front pocket, I sometimes forget I even have an on me. Maybe that's a good thing or a bad thing. For me, I find it to be a good thing because basically that means I always have my wallet on me without me realizing it. So yeah, this is uh, one of their ones. Uh, I forget which one they call this. I think it's like the blue Damascus or something like that. Uh, they're not cheap, but if you think about it, reliable wallets never are. Uh, I was using a Breath of the Wild full leather wallet the last five years that completely had fallen apart and I spent $250 on that wallet. This one I believe runs about $150. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So, you know what? Uh, why don't you go ahead and check out Ridge Wallet down below. Uh, you know, get it as a Father's Day present. Or uh, maybe you just want to buy it for yourself. Get, use that 15% off code now through Father's Day. And, uh, yeah, you know, Ridge Wallet, baby. 
Thanks for sponsoring. All right, so let's get into an archive of this that exists on archive.ph. Uh, and let's just read this. It says, hello, I received an email from a developer recently. I'm a content creator. And there's the part where kind of brings all his content creators into the fray for trustworthiness with these uh, video game companies. Asking me if I was interested in a code for a Nintendo game that launches next week on Switch, which I personally wasn't, but the game will be exciting for some action fans. Usually when this happens, the publisher will ask me to sign an NDA before sharing any info at all. I get emails like this as well. I don't know that this person understands what relationships are like with, with developers. The NDA... Anyways... Sorry, we'll, we'll talk about this later. I'm, I'm really frustrated by this whole situation. So including even what the game is. Well, of course, you know, yeah. Oddly enough, they did not do that this time or ask me not to share this information. It's a common courtesy uh, at all. So it's all fair game. Okay. Uh, that said, out of respect for their surprise, I'm going to make a thread on Reddit about it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I will not say what the game or developer is. With that out of the way, the game is scheduled to drop on Switch next Wednesday, which is, it, we'll get into why I actually think the whole Wednesday thing from this particular email is wrong. But moving on, it says, uh, drop on Switch next Wednesday with the embargo for coverage also being on Wednesday, June 15th. It's going to be one of the shadow drops during the Nintendo Direct since the embargo is set for specifically 9 a.m. Pacific. I presume that's when the next Nintendo Direct will happen, 9 a.m. Pacific on Wednesday, June 15th, which is a common time for Nintendo to do Directs. As a side note, this lines up with some of the other developers that I did sign NDAs for sent to me. So now we're bringing other developers into the fray that you signed NDAs for that you're not even supposed to talk about dates with, and now you're saying, hey, other developers, you shouldn't mention that, but that's besides the point. Hyped to watch with you guys next week. Oh, he's not done, though, because he edited the post, and he said, screw it, I'm bored tonight. So here's an edited screenshot. Sorry, only the mods will know what the game is, and the mods did see the full email uh, and confirmed that this was legit. Um, and his email, he, he blacked out some parts pretty poorly. He clearly did this on an iPhone or some, some uh, mobile editing app and didn't realize that he didn't fully black out the text. Uh, this is going to come into play later. Uh, also, I take this as a rumor originally since I cannot confirm this for you guys, but it's all but confirmed to me due to some stuff I signed NDAs for that line up to, again, repeating and repeating that he has, uh, you know, if he's got one developer developer thing that's been proven uh, to be real, the rest are probably real as well, which means he's just telling us when the direct is going to be based on things he already signed NDAs for that he's not even supposed to talk about and people aren't even supposed to know. Okay, if it helps any, as I mentioned in the comment below, the Switch console exclusive was originally announced in a direct. We actually know what the console exclusive is because of his stupidity. Finally, I'm surprised no one uh, was wondering why I think the Direct is Wednesday but not Thursday. Well, that's because some other info I didn't share that hit at it, plus the fact that I believe, but don't know since I didn't get a code, that they set the gameplay slash video embargo for Thursday morning since the game will likely come out at a different times throughout Wednesday, probably especially for Steam players. It's also possible the game just comes out the next day. Uh, so coverage can, you know, you can get reviews and other coverage in on the 15th and they release the game on the 16th. That's also a possibility. Uh, and what's interesting here is I showed you the image that he showed and I showed you how poorly he blacked it out. You could just up the contrast and we could see basically the entire email. And we found out that this is an email for Neon White. And it's been confirmed that it is for Neon White, uh, which is a game that was unveiled during a Nintendo Direct and is an action game. So, it, 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 look, look. It's one thing to, to say, out of respect for the developers, you don't make this post. But this person is, is being an idiot on many levels. Look, I don't have an email for Neon White. I don't have an email for anything being unveiled next week. Okay, I don't have any contacts for anything being unveiled next week. There's like one game I know about that's coming out here uh, in the next few days. Uh, but it, it's whatever. That game's publicly known and, and, and we already have a release date for it. So it's not that big of a deal and I'm in contact with the developers on it. But here's the thing. I've been talking to game developers for 20 years. Right? This goes back to my Zelda in former days. I was talking directly to Nintendo. I talked to the people behind Epic Mickey. Uh, I've been talking to people at Capcom and all these other companies. Like, I've been talking to companies for 20 years. And I can tell you right now, when they email your publicly available business contact email, business contact emails 
are for business related items not intended for the public. I get probably, I don't know, uh, let's say a dozen companies contacting me per week wanting me to check out their game, whether it's indie, uh, all, all the way up to the big boys like Ubisoft and Capcom, Nintendo every once in a while. Like, I'll get emails from these companies every single week asking me to look at things. Do I want a review copy of this? Do, do you know, just remember that like, hey, you know, we don't want any footage or anything, or we only play up to a certain part. You can only show 15 minutes here, 10 minutes there, no cut scenes or whatever, whatever embargoes they want to throw on. But the common courtesy when they reach out to you with that initial email will sometimes include the name of the game. It will sometimes include some of the embargo details before you even agree to the embargo. This is industry standard practice because this is a business email. You need to take business emails, the email account you have listed publicly for business contact, to be of private nature. You are not to unveil details that are within your emails in this private nature without express permission. Them not locking you into an embargo before they tell you what the game is, is not the same thing. In fact, most of the embargoes I have ever been part of, I knew what it was for, and I knew when they were planning to have the coverage up before I ever agreed to a damn thing. It's industry standard practice. You don't, you just don't do this. It's stupid. And it makes content creators look unreliable and silly. And look, no one has figured out who this content creator is yet, so credit to them. Whatever this account is they use on Reddit has not been able to be linked back to a specific YouTuber yet, but this is the internet, and that's only a matter of time before somebody figures out who this content creator actually is. In fact, maybe at the time of posting this, somebody actually has figured it out. But the point is that we don't talk about these things for a reason. It's out of respect of a business conversation happening behind the scenes. If they want it to be known publicly, they would just reach out to you on Twitter and say something in public. When they reach out to private business emails, the information's intended to be private. So to even share this, even part of the email, to even wanna go to Reddit is just saying, hey, Guess what? I am no longer trustworthy. And you know how much you can narrow this down? You can be, oh, they're talking about a Nintendo Direct. Oh, they have multiple companies talking about things next week, kind of giving me a feeling on when the Direct date's going to be. Okay, so now we can narrow this down. This is a Nintendo content creator. And we can narrow it down even further because it's a Nintendo content creator. They got an email about Neon White. So we can go, Nintendo content creators, specifically Neon White, dig through there. They can figure out who the hell this is and they're gonna get blacklisted by the industry. They're going to get blacklisted by the industry. And they're also going to hurt content creators like me that don't unveil this stuff, don't release these you know, exclusive details. They're gonna hurt content creators like me and disable my ability to be able to get my hands on games and my ability to do preview coverage in the future. That's how stupid this is. They hurt the entire content creator community, specifically Nintendo content creators. You know how hard it is to build trustworthy relationships, especially at my size, 78,000 subscribers. You know how hard it is to build trust with companies when they're going out on a limb to trust that you're not gonna be one of those assholes that's going to leak information about their products to the public? And that's why it's incredibly frustrating. I've been fortunate that I could build some solid relationships. This is one reason why Prime Gaming Fest ends up as big as it is. It's not just about the entertaining aspects of the Nate vs. Eric and our tournaments and all the game reveals and all the fun stuff we do. The reason that we're able to give away so much stuff, so much more than I can personally afford to give away, is because of relationships I've been able to foster with different companies. Conversations with Ubisoft, Capcom. You know, you know how many conversations I had with Capcom before they would trust to be able to support our show and, and give us some stuff to give away to you guys? You know the kind of conversations that I have behind the scenes with all of these companies in order to build up a, a long-standing relationship so they understand not only what we're doing and what, not only what this channel's about, but also understand that I'm not going to be that guy that's going to throw your information out there about unreleased products. I know information right now about games that are coming out later this year that haven't, been, uh, haven't even been unveiled yet. And you guys have never heard me one time on a live stream 
make a reference. In a video, make a reference to any of these games or what platforms they're on. And you might go, he's a Nintendo YouTuber. Must be Nintendo. Not necessarily. I know about games coming to multiple platforms coming later this year. Haven't said one goddamn word about it. Because I know better. I'm not Nate the Hate hiding behind a username. I'm not, you know, Emily Rogers throwing, throwing, throwing two cents out there. I'm not Samus Hunter. I'm not some random user on Reddit here. I'm Nathaniel Rumpel Jance. I'm very much in front of the public. My full name's out there. I'm not about to leak information. At least information like this. I'm not saying that I can't ever share details sometimes and use my sources for that, but these aren't sources. These are the companies themselves talking directly to me. I'm not going to sit here and tell you anything I've heard. Ever. Because that's how you build trust. That's how you eventually end up being sent early games. Early copies of games. So I can do better coverage of games for you guys. Wouldn't it be great if because of the relationship I'm establishing with Ubisoft that I can get a copy of Sparks of Hope and actually do pre-release coverage? I think that would be amazing. I think that would be awesome. And I think you guys would love that content. But I can't do that when content creators like this are making these companies less and less and less trusting. It's incredibly frustrating. And this guy did it in the stupidest of way. It's one thing if they wanted to use some random Reddit thing and just claim they knew who the direct was and make these random claims or throw them on Twitter and leave it at that. But to provide the evidence and then to do such a poor job of censoring that evidence, it's amateur hour, man. It's amateur hour. We all make mistakes. But he kept pressing. He kept answering questions in the comment section on this post. And yeah, he's now deleted the original post after it's been up for over a day. The internet never forgets. So look, there's a lot of news I want to talk about. There's a whole bunch of stories out there. A lot of these stories we'll end up talking about during Prime Gaming Fest, June 9th to June, June uh, 14th. But... It is frustrating that we're here two days in a row talking about Nintendo Direct rumors, leaks, whatever. And this time around, it's a pretty legit leak. Confirmed leak. By the way, if you stuck around this long and you actually want to know the date, it's June 15th. June 15th. Supposedly. June 15th. Sorry if I wasted a bunch of your time, but that's all you were here for. But hey, you know, I needed to get that off my chest. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I understand the Jets from the Center Prime, and uh, let's do better content creators. If you're fortunate uh, to be getting contacted by multiple companies around a Nintendo Direct time, do better. Keep it to yourself. Catch you guys in the next video.